Welcome to the lecture 9 of the optimization course. Prior to this lecture, we have covered several concepts which are very, very important. And in fact, in the last couple of lectures, we focused on single variable optimization problems, which are unconstrained optimization problems, and also multiple variable unconstrained optimization problems in which we learned about uh, algorithms like and gradient descent, which is a very, very useful algorithm that is typically used a lot in machine learning. And then we also discussed the uses of Newton's methods in the last lecture. So we'll come back and expand on the knowledge that we have about optimization by moving from and using the knowledge that we have developed as a part of unconstrained optimization problem to a constrained optimization problems, which are a more general problem than an unconstrained optimization problem. Sometimes in machine learning, you might not be using a lot of constrained optimization problems and having a sufficient knowledge of unconstrained optimization should be enough, but having a greater understanding of a constrained optimization could also be useful in many different contexts, including machine learning. And they are very, very important concepts to understand for a wide variety of problems anyway. Okay, now the key concept that we are going to be focusing on this class uh, is using this idea of taking a constrained optimization problem and converting that into an unconstrained optimization problem. And why is that? If you are able to take a constrained optimization and convert that into an unconstrained optimization problem, then all the algorithms that are used for, you know, solving unconstrained optimization could be used to solve constrained optimization problem. And that itself is the major idea and it's a very important idea in an optimization, which is essentially captured by this name, augmented Lagrangian method. And what we do is we use an augmented Lagrangian formulation which allows us to convert a constrained optimization problem into an unconstrained optimization problem. And then we can use algorithms like gradient descent or Newton's method to solve for the constrained optimization problem. And that is what is going to be the focus of today's class. So let's move on. Okay, so the recap, one of the important things that I want to do is the general optimization problem in general would be having obviously the objective function which we are going to minimize. So we have an objective function, but traditionally as we discussed at the beginning of this course that you might also have set of constraints which this objective function might be constrained to. And there are two types of constraints that are typically used. They are, you know, first of all, inequality constraint. So they are represented by G in general, in optimization, so you know you can have from one to j, you can have different inequality constraints, and then you can also have equality constraints also in, in the formulation. And these are the two constraints that we alluded to and discussed a little bit uh, during the initial portion of the course. Now, what we want to do is basically take our learning, which was first focused on unconstrained optimization problem, where the objective was to just focus on the objective function and do not worry because we did not have this inequality or in uh, equality constraint beforehand and solve that problem. But now we are making a problem a little bit more complex by adding on top of objective function, the inequality constraint and the equality constraints, which are represented by gx and hx respectively. Okay, and this is a more general problem that we need to be solved. So today's lecture is focused on constraint optimization problem where the constraints are also given on top of the objective function that we have. Okay, so that's the new thing that we are developing in this lecture. So as I mentioned and alluded that the main idea and the main um, aspect of solving unconstrained, uh, sorry, constrained optimization problem, one of the key ideas is, okay, take a constrained optimization problem and first of all, through some mathematical tricks, can we convert that into an unconstrained optimization problem? And if we can do that, then we can use any algorithm that is used for solving an unconstrained optimization problem and solve the constraint. And that's what is taken care by this augmented Lagrangian. So what I want to do is I want to first of all develop this augmented Lagrangian idea with just the presence of equality constraints, which is HX and first 
we will not worry about GX and then we will see how we can account for GX also in the problem formulation and give you the idea. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so what we do for us to create augmented Lagrangian, we first create what is known as Lagrangian, which is slightly different than the augmented Lagrangian. So, you know, keep, keep in mind, then when we are formulating a Lagrangian, that's slightly different than augmented Lagrangian. So, the step one in the formulation of augmented Lagrangian is essentially creation of this Lagrangian. And the whole context, at least now, is with focus on only equality. If we had a problem where we had only had an equality constraint. Okay. If that's the case, what we can do is we will take the equations that have, for example, you know, remember our equations might be we have this objective function, right? And then we have a set of equality constraints, right? The hkx is equal to zero, and then you know this k goes from one to you know uh, capital K, which will be the k number of equality constraints. So if we have this, right, what we can do is we can take both of this function fx and hx k of them and combine this to create what is known as this Lagrangian and in this Lagrangian we are introducing this new vector which is this new vector which is uh, essentially a variable that is multiplied to the individual inequality constraints and then that is linearly added to the objective function and that gives me a resultant function that is known as the Lagrangian function. Okay, and again, this will become you know, clear with an example problem of how to do that. But essentially what we do is we do a linear combination of each of the equality constraint and we add that to the objective function and that gives me a function which is termed as Lagrangian function. Okay, so if we have that, then we have this Lagrangian which is the step one. And then, you know, from there we essentially also create what is known as augmented Lagrangian. Okay, and again here what we have we are in this summation term, we have all the different HIs, which is like the inequality, sorry, equality constraints which are multiplied and summed together, okay? And then, you know, these are essentially the linear combination of each of the equality constraint that is added to the objective function and that is the resultant function, that function is known as Lagrangian function, I mentioned that. And then, using some ideas of what is known as exterior parity approach, we slightly modified this Lagrangian function which is known as augmented Lagrangian function and we write this equation like here. Here what we are doing, we are adding additional variable rp and then we are multiplying that rp and squaring each of the individual xi and also adding that to the Lagrangian functions. And if we do that, this function where we are adding this rp and multiplied, squared multiplied of each of the equality constraint, that is known as augmented Lagrangian. So this function is the augmented Lagrangian. And once we have done that, what essentially the idea is, now we can take an uh, unconstrained optimization problem and use this function as our objective function and solve for this one. And once we solve that problem, essentially we will be able to solve the constrained optimization problem. And that's the key idea here. But what is happening? In order for us to convert an a constrained optimization problem into unconstrained optimization problem, we are formulating a, a Lagrangian first and then we are formulating an augmented Lagrangian and in this setting what is happening, the number of variables that are there in the problem is increasing. Why? Because for each equality constraint you have this new k. So if there are three equality constraints, you will have three new variables, new one, new two, new three, that will be coming into picture and then you will have one more variable rp that will be coming into picture. So we are adding four more variables on top of the original number of variables which are excised in the overall problem. So the dimensionality of the problem is increasing in the augmented Lagrangian formulation and depending upon how many equality constraints you have, the dimensionality will increase by that magnitude. Okay. And this is, so the number of variables in this problem is a little bit higher, but the beauty is even if the number of variables are higher, what we can do is we can take a constrained optimization problem and convert that into an unconstrained optimization problem and solve the unconstrained optimization problem, okay? And that could be solved using gradient descent or Newton's method which we had discussed in the last class or any approach uh, that is used for unconstrained, you can use it here and solve for this this class of problem and that's the main idea that we have, okay? So this is the augmented Lagrangian, 
right? Uh, and then let's once that is done, what we do is we have a slightly modified version uh, uh, that could be used to solve for this class of problems. So what we do is we initially we choose a small value for this newly introduced variable rp and new one, new two, new three if you have three equality constraint or new k if you have k number of constraints that we have. Okay. And then that is equal to the number of color card and then we minimize this pseudo objective function which is basically you know our uh, augmented Lagrangian function. This is what we are focusing on and this is what is essentially what we are optimizing. Okay. So we update this and this updates equations are also given what we see here. So these are based upon the iteration index, these are based upon the update and RP is also updated in an iterative fashion. So we essentially on top of X updates, we have some specific update scheme for RP and new K variables that we have. Okay. And we keep repeating this until the convergence is achieved. Okay. Now, when do we stop the iterative process? There has to be a stopping criteria. So in augmented Lagrangian method, the convergence criteria is slightly different and it also accounts for variables which have been newly introduced in the Lagrangian function on top of the variables that are typically used in the unconstrained optimization problem. So here is one criteria. If the new k values in the previous iteration and the new iteration is not changing, that means the problem is actually not changing and that might be an indication that we might need to be stopping. So that's the first criteria. The second criteria which is coming based upon the function value improvement, if the function value is not improving, right, or if you are minimizing and the, you know, there is no, not much reduction in the objective function values in the each iteration which is essentially captured by this metric uh, by thresholding it, then that is also an indicator that we should stop our search and, you know, we should uh, converge on that search. Okay? So that's the general criteria, stopping criteria, and it is a slightly modified stopping criteria than what we have listed for, you know, Newton's method in the previous class. But as I said, there are multiple different ones are there, and this is one that, that could be also used uh, in the augmented Lagrangian formulation. Then there are third one, which is essentially to make sure that, you know, uh, you have reached and you have not violated the equality constraint uh, comprehensively and you essentially lie on the equality constraint and that is encoded by this thresholding approach. So if you have this three criteria, uh, in this setting, if you are lying on the equality constraint, then your solution is feasible. So this third criteria is also introduced. And if you are satisfying all the three criteria, not only just the one, but all the three criteria together, then that is a good point to stop the convergence or to stop the, you know, algorithm and not iteratively run beyond, right? So if you're taking from x1, x2 and so on, we need to stop somewhere and these criteria are the criteria that define when we should be stopping the overall search process. So this in itself is also the actual algorithm uh, that, you know, so you might have a Newton's algorithm or you might have a, uh, you know, let's say gradient uh, descent algorithm that is solving, but then your criteria for convergence is checked by these three conditions and you introduce these two new criteria, A and C, into the picture on top of this, which is typically there for any unconstrained optimization problem. And then that defines when your iterative search process to, should stop. Okay, and that's what is typically done 